Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his infinite blessings. I've been reflecting on this for a few of the khutbahs that I've been given and for me, I think it is a great place to start. We think about the verse, وَإِن تُعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا that if you were to enumerate the bounties and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you would never be able to count them. And we can think of many blessings, but at times I feel that we overlook one of the greatest blessings, which is this blessing of life. That He subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His infinite mercy, in His infinite rahmah, in his irada, in his qudra, in his will, has brought us from a state of non-existence into a state of existence. In Surah Al-Insan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ هِنَ مِنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا Has there not come a time among human beings when he was not even a thing mentioned, where you and I were not even a thing mentioned, but from the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has brought us into a state of existence. I was listening to a lecture the other day, and the scholar, she said that statisticians had created an algorithm in which they calculated what was the statistical percentage that a human being would be born in the time that they are born, which is right now, with the DNA that they are born with. And she said that the calculation was 400 trillion to one. That it's a 400 trillion to one chance that you are born in the time that you are born in right now. And if you were to enumerate the bounties of your Lord, you would not be able to enumerate them, bringing us from a state of non-existence into a state of existence. How could it be that this is just some random chance that we are here? What I look at that is the miraculous nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's desire for each and every single one of us to be here at this time. Then I thought to myself, how could they even calculate 400 trillion to one? Because that means that they would have to have had determined every single possibility that brought my parents together and brought their parents together, and brought their parents together, and the circumstances that prevented the things for, or them from meeting other people. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can determine this. What I take from it is that each and every single one of us is a miracle sitting here right now. From the desire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we should not think of ourselves of anything other than that, of that miraculous nature. And then, as I said, from the Mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are not running around in this world trying to figure out why we are here asking that question. Who is my Lord? What is my purpose? Where am I going? That He, alhamdulillah, by blessing us with Islam has given us a path to answer those questions. Has given us a messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to show us in the human form that way to His pleasure. Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as we begin to think about things in this manner, then perhaps we will see ourselves and our relationship towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a different meaning. There is a lot to deal with right now. We understand this and we know this. This pressures both internally and externally with regard to Muslims. But the reality is the state in which we exist is left up to us. What we determine it to be is what it will be. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is the incredible opportunity that each and every single one of us is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mentioned in the Hadith Qudsi. 
As short perhaps as this hadith may sound, it is incredibly profound. That regardless and irrespective of whatever the situation is outward, whatever it seems like is happening on the manifest, there is the reality of Al Haq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says in that hadith that I am as my servant thinks I am. I am as my servant thinks I am. The onus for happiness and joy is on us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already created us and guided us and given us Islam and given us Iman to act upon it and then allowed us to make the choice of how we will feel. Of how we will take in all of this ebb and flow that we have seen historically happening time and time and time again. Yes, these are difficult times, but the Ummah has passed through difficult times. One million people, oh, I'm sorry, it said that there were, yes, a million people killed in a week when Baghdad was raised to the ground. In a week. That's without the type of technology that exists today for how human lives are taken. Can you imagine that? So the Ummah has been through dark times. This nation has been through dark times. But the determinant is with us of how we will respond to that. That's incredibly liberating. It's incredibly liberating. And then the fight is all of those external factors and shelter, all those external factors that will prevent us from having the falah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, having the joy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to talk about, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Hayya ala al-falah, come to success. Come to success. Alhamdulillah, we heed to that call coming here, and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. I just want to share a, a few notes with you, a few thoughts of something that I was talking with one of the faculty members, one of the, uh, Sheikh Abdullah, Abdul Hamid. We are talking about the dhikr, the dhikr that we read after the salat. So there are many adhkar, there are many forms of dhikr that we read after the salat, but one that is mentioned is that we read subhanallah 33 times and alhamdulillah 33 times, and Allahu Akbar 34 times at the end of a salat. And we know this, and we do this. But in my opinion, he had an incredible insight into something. He said, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach the Prophet sallallahu to read them in this order? Why the subhanallah first? <coughs> and what he shared with me, in my opinion, is something that was profound, inshallah ta'ala, we will find meaning in it. He said that the subhanallah coming first is this idea that when we look out into the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are absolutely in a state of astonishment. And we are bewildered by it. Subhanallah. When we look at these mountains or rivers or whatever it is that we see in this world, we look at it on one level and we say, Subhanallah, we're bewildered by it. But then there's another level. And that second level is a level of appreciation. Alhamdulillah. So now I look at that same thing. And I look at that river and I say, Alhamdulillah for that river that is flowing, that is bringing the aquifer so that we can have water, so that it will have grass, so that it will eat, the cows will eat the grass, so that I can have it. I understand this whole cycle now in a different way. So now when I look at that river and it went from subhanAllah, from bewilderment and astonishment, it now comes to appreciation. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about appreciation? in shakartum la'azidannakum. And when you show appreciation and gratitude to what I have given you, then I will increase you. May Allah allow us to be people that are not only enamored, mashallah, by His creative abilities. Because some people get stuck just at that, they're enamored by this world. 
But what we're saying is, no, continue, go further. Go into a state of hamd. And go into a state which he said the last and final state is what? Allahu Akbar. <clears throat> Complete celebration. Complete celebration. So let's talk about very briefly each one of these points here. Subhanallah. It comes in verses of the Quran. Ibn Taymiyyah Rahim Allah says that the command to glorify Allah by saying Subhanallah also implies declaring, declaring Him to be above every fault and shortcoming and affirming the attributes of perfection to Him. Declaring Him to be above any fault and venerating Him. Sabbih ismi rabbikal a'la when you read the tafsir is nazir. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all faults. That's the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we do not prescribe to anybody. Which we, don't, which we do not prescribe to anybody. And if you look at this, the first time that we see this subhanaka that comes in the Qur'an is when the malaika, when the angels are responding to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the challenge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts out to them when he says that he has given Adam the names of all things. When he has given Adam the names of all things. And then he says to the malaika, inform me. Tell me the names of these things. Tell me the names of these things if it is true that you are informed of these things. What do the malaika say? Qalu subhanak. La ilmalana illa ma alamtana innaka anta. Innaka anta alim al hakim. Al alim al hakim. The all knowing and the wise. The all-knowing and the wise. And what did the angels say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They say, glory be to you. We have no knowledge except for that which you have taught us. But their response, their initial response is subhanak. That's the point that I want to make. Their initial response is subhanak. And then again, when do we find it? الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامُ وَقُعُودٍ وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا those that glorify or make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qiyaman wa qa'ud, and standing up or on their sides or lying down, meaning that the scholars said, if there is no other state that a person can be in, either you're standing up or you're reclining or you're lying down, unless you're able to levitate or something like that, but that's another tafsir. But these are the states, meaning that in all of those states, that's when a person is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of those states. And what do they do? Thinking about, contemplating about this world. Contemplating about it. Thinking about it. And using it as a means to increase them in their iman. And what's the next thing that is said? مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا You have not created this in jest. You have not created this in play. Subhanak. Subhanak. Glory to you. So we're again at this state of bewilderment. That we're just astonished by the creative majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah. And then, this ayah, moving now into the hamd. It's a longer ayah, and I'll read just the last part of it. When it's talking about people of the inhabitants of Jannah, al-hamd. So hamd now is what, as we said? Hamd is the, is the praise, the showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This hamd. So first we have this bewilderment, and then we have this appreciation, if you will. Appreciation for all things that are given to us. وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَ لِهَذَا مَا كُنَّ لِنَهْتَرِ لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ لَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُولِ رَبِّنَا بِالْحَقِّ وَنُودُ أَنْ تِلْكُمُ الْجَنَّةَ أُورِثْتُمُوهَا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here that the inhabitants of Jannah will say Alhamdulillah الَّذِي هَدَانَ لِهَذَا 
وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْدَرِيَ لَوْ لَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ The first thing that they, Alhamdulillah, all praise, the appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has guided us to this. This meaning Al-Islam. And we will not be guided if He did not guide us. So showing appreciation, not just for the things that we have. That's a material level. And perhaps you've heard me say this before. The difference between a material a view in the material world and a view in the spiritual world is like this. A material reality is to think that I am this physical being that contains a soul. So I look at all things in a material plane. But the spiritual view is to look at the reality that I am a soul which is contained in this body. And now I will look at things spiritually. And then the physical things are only secondary, but the soul is given the primacy. The soul is given the primacy. The spiritual reality is given the primacy. Because it's not just about things. Let's look at this dua, beautiful dua of the Prophet. All of the duas of the Prophet are beautiful, but let's look at this one in particular. The dua that he reads when he gets up for, for tahajjud. When he gets up for the night prayer. We'll read it in Arabic first and then I'll read the translation after. It says, An ta'awus in Samia ibn Abbas and Radiallahu anima call Kenan Abi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam id qama mina layli liyata hajjud kala Allahumma lak alhamd. He starts off, Allahumma lak alhamd. Oh Allah, to you is all the praise. And to qayyimu samawati wal ard wa man fi hinna. Walakal hamdu lakal mulku samawati wal ard wa man fi hinna. Walakal hamdu unto nur samawati wal ard. Walakal hamdu unto al haq. Wawadu kal haq. وَلِكَاءُكَ الْحَقِّ وَقَوْلُكَ الْحَقِّ وَجَنَّةُ الْحَقِّ وَنَارُ الْحَقِّ وَنَبِيُّونَ الْحَقِّ وَمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ الْحَقِّ وَسَعَادَ حَقِّ وَالْحَقِّ اللَّهُمَّ لَكَ أَسْلَمْتُ وَبِكَ آمَنْتُ وَعَلَيْكَ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْكَ أَنِبْتُ وَبِكَ خَاصَمْتُ وَإِلَيْكَ حَكَمْتُ فَاغْفِرْ لِي مَا تَقَدَّمْتُ وَأَخَرْتُ and it continues on to the end the first thing he does, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he's getting up and making these du'as to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, it's all about praise. It's all about praise, but it's not about praise for material things. It's orienting us to the akhirah. That's what he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is constantly doing. He's constantly orienting us to the akhirah over and over and over again. When he gets up, the first thing he says, "Oh Allah, all praise us for you." You are the possessor of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in them. And all praises for you are the possessor of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in them. And all praises for you are the light of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. All praises for you, you are the king of the heavens and the earth. And all praises for you, you are the truth. And you are the truth, and your promise is truth. The meeting with you is truth. The word is truth. Paradise is truth. Hell is truth. The prophets are truth. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is truth. I re surrender my will to you, and I believe in you. That's, the, that's that hamd. That's that appreciation that he has guided us to all of this. So when we sit after that salat, it is not just something as simple as alhamdulillah, or subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wallahu akbar. Let's look at them at a deeper level. What is that thing that I'm saying Subhanaka for right now when I'm making this 33 times? What are 33 things that I can think of right now in my life that I'm saying Subhanaka for? What are 33 things in my life that I'm saying Alhamdulillah for? What are those things? For that glass of water that has quenched my thirst all the way through this home that I've got, to the children that I have, to the life that I have, to this degree that I have, for the future that I have, and for the fact that you have put me in the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where Musa Alayhi Salam, a Nabi that a quarter of the Prophet, a quarter of the Qur'an is mentioned about. A quarter of the Qur'an is written about Musa alayhi salam that he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he sees the reward of the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad and sallallahu alayhi salam, the ummah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought you and I to, alhamdulillah. He asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a member of the ummah. What did I do? What did I do to receive that honor that a prophet such as Musa, Kalam Allah Musa Takliban, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken to, asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be in the ummah, and Allah chose you. And Allah chose you. 
Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Aqul qul hadha wa astaghfiru lakum wa mu'minin ya qawmi astaghfirullah innahu huwa ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah hamdan kathiran kama amar wa shadu an la ilaha illallah wa shadu anna sayyidina wa habibina maulana sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ibadullah udhakirukum bi taqullahi subhanahu wa ta'ala udhakirukum bi qawlihi sayyidina muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam haythi yaqul ittaqullah haythi ma kuntum fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are udhakirukum bi qawlihi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وذكركم من شرف مكان مصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم حيث يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا محمد كما باركت وصليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى سيدنا إبراهيم إنك أنت حميد مجيد والحمد لله from that astonishment and bewilderment to the maqam of appreciation, we then find ourselves with Allahu Akbar in the maqam and the station of celebration. When does this Allahu Akbar, something that we are ordered to do, when does it happen? It happens at the Eid. It happens in the Eid khutbah. It doesn't happen in this khutbah. We have the takbirats of the Eid. Why do we have the takbirats of the Eid? Because it is a celebration for something that we could only dream of. A celebration that after the Arafah, after the Hujjaj have left Arafah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never will turn away the dua of the supplicators. So all of the supplications that people have been asking for, all of the supplications that the people have been asking for, all of the desires that they had to be forgiven of their sins, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven them. So what is the command there to do? It's to celebrate. How do we celebrate? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And the shame of it, the shame in our day and age, is how this beautiful celebration is being twisted and being used to take innocent lives. The beauty lies in the celebration of the ridha, of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing else. As much as people want to claim it, it remains true to its essence. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And again, just a few or an ayat the ayat that we know about Ramadan, where Allah SWT says, Shahu Ramadan al-lazhi unzila fi al-Qur'an and hudan lil-nasi wal-bayyinati min al-huda wal-furqani faman shahida minkum shahra fal-yasum So this ayat, and it continues, and it goes on here, this month of Ramadan, it is at the end. Yureed Allah bikum al-yusra wa la yureed bikum al-usra وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهُ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ It's this last part right here. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to make things difficult for you. And He wants you to complete the number of days. It's talking about the days that you would have been fasting. He doesn't want to make things difficult to you. He wants you to complete these days. And that with that completion of the Ramadan, that you magnify here, or you celebrate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani by saying the takbirs, for having been guided so that we can be grateful to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's that reality. That's that reality. And then again, connected with the Eid, with the slaughter, the sacrifice of that lamb that happens. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? لَيِّنَا اللَّهُ لَحُومَهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا 
ولكن ينال التقوى منكم وكذلك سخرها لكم لتكبروا الله على ما هداكم وبشر المحسنين again here in closing it is neither their meat on that sacrifice it is not this physical act of sacrificing but the act of taqwa that we would sacrifice our wealth and our time in following in the way of our father Ibrahim and our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we would sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but as he said it's not the meat it's not the blood that reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's the taqwa in our hearts and no one can judge us on that and no one knows what it is no one knows what that reality is it's a secret between the abd and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a secret between the servant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh we ask Allah to make us of the mukhlisin and what does he say here and like that, he has allowed these animals to be subjugated by you so that you will glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that you will celebrate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has guided you to, for what he has guided you to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality of the celebration of Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our astonishment and bewilderment of him be turned into a beautiful means of appreciation. Allahumma arham al-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat, al-muslimin wa al-muslimat, al-ahya'i minhum wa al-amwati arham al-rahimin. Allahumma iftah alayna fathan qariban mubinan wasi'an fathan yilik bi karamika wa rahmatika ya arham al-rahimin. Allahumma kun ma'na wa la takun alayna abadan ya rabbi al-alamin. اللهم ردنا لدينك ردا جميلا يا رب العالمين اللهم من يريد خير لهذه أمة محمدية فوافقنا كل خير ومن يريد غير ذلك فخذه أخذ العزيز المقتل يا رب العالمين اللهم أرحمنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم نقوم بين يديك يا رب العالمين اللهم نوّي قبورنا وقلوبنا بالقرآن الكريم وكرمنا بتلاوة كتابك آنا ليه وأطراف النهار يا رب العالمين اللهم ورضى اللهم ورضى أن خلفاء راشدين أبي بكر عمر وعثمان وعلي والحسن والحسين والفحت مظهرة والأزواج النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم طاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وأن أصحاب وأن صحابتي أجمعين وتابعين وتابعين بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم عباد الله أقيم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله